Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. Welcome to Mosaic Minds Podcast. So today we're joined by, you go by Matt or Matthew? Uh, Matt. Okay. So today we're joined by Matt Pace. Um, he's a, a friend of Jason's. Um, Jason knows him as a, um, a videographer for different pickleball games and events. So I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Jason introduce him. I've known Matt for a couple of years. Um, you've actually uh, played with us, and I know you filmed for the circuits. So talk to me a little bit about uh, your experience maybe in the Louisville sports scene. Let's start there first. I know I always see you posting on like Louisville basketball games and stuff. What's what's kind of your uh, favorite sports and things to do there in Louisville area? Yeah, I go to a lot of the basketball games and a lot of the football games. This ain't been the best year for basketball, obviously for Louisville, but we'll see how it goes from there. But the football team, they're always they're always solid every year. I try and go to as many games as I can every year. Louisville is one of my favorite places to go, just kind of like as a, a mini vacation. I like the the music scene and and you know the just kind of like the foodie scene and all that. Do you do, do you get into any of that? Um, do you like like what is it? Is it Fourth Fourth Street Live? Uh, yeah. yeah, Fourth Street been, Live and all that stuff. Yeah, I've been there some. It's a, it's not really for me. It's a lot of seems to be a lot of younger people that are really there to party, and I'm. It's not really uh, my style, but a yeah, lot see, of people that, seem to enjoy it. That's how I pretend to stay, you know, like pretend to still be young, even though I'm not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't mention this, but do you ever go to the track just because you're right there in the big city? Or is that just something you don't really, you know, what's your opinion I, on the track? Yeah, I think I've been there twice. I went to the Derby once. It's it's fun, but it's not really my scene. That's a lot of people and it's it's all right. 10 4. I, uh, I make it through Louisville a lot. I got family in Lexington, Harrodsburg area, and uh, Salvisa specifically, another hour and a half up the road. So Louisville's kind of the halfway stopping point. I like to go over there uh, across the Indiana side of the river and eat at a place called the Red Yeti. They got really yep. good steaks in there at Jeffersonville down in that area over by the uh, Fisherman's Wharf area. Yeah. So I've heard of I've not been there, but everybody said it's really good. Great pickleball scene, uh, kind of transitioning into the bulk of our interview there. Great pickleball scene there at uh, Tom Sawyer. Um, that's a great uh, event or tournament area there. Uh, where where do you primarily play around the city of Louisville? Uh, Tom Sawyer usually is, is the place for outdoors. Indoors, there's a the place called Pickleball Euphoria at Springhurst Tennis Center. They kind of converted a bunch of tennis courts into pickleball courts. They have 10 indoor courts. I actually played there yesterday in a tournament, so... There, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger every year around here. Yeah, I think it's amazing to see the growth. I know uh, Nick and I are currently in Greenwood. They recently put up 15 additional courts to date. They already had there in Plainfield another 15 miles uh, from here. They put up another eight courts, so we got about 16 courts within a half mile. So what kind of got you into starting the sport? Uh, I think probably seven, eight years ago, one of my buddies, he found it. Somehow, I don't know how, maybe the newspaper or somebody advertised it at a local church. And uh, he went to it, and then a couple of days later, he said, you should come try it. And we went and tried it, and from there, just kind of kept going. But I started playing before it was even really popular or banging like it is now. Now, Matt, which which one is um, which one came first? Was it your video, like your videography, or pickleball? No, the, the pickleball was first, because they didn't really start doing, like, filming pro pickleball until about right around COVID time or after COVID is when it really blew up. So you got kind of got into filming after you got into pickleball. Do you do any other kind of filming of any other sport or any other event nah. or just pretty much strictly pickleball? <clears throat> no, it's just pickleball. It's just a company. I was at a tournament one time and they were looking for people to run a camber and my roommate did it first. And then the next tournament I joined in, and we just kind of went from there. We've been doing it for probably almost three years now. That's cool. Did you play any other sports, like maybe in high school, that kind of led to an athletic background, or did you just kind of pick up pickleball as the first sport you ever played? Man, no, I did. 
I was a runner, so I did track, cross country, that kind of stuff. I'd never played played like recreational basketball stuff like that, but never anything serious. I was a basketball and baseball player. What What's cool about pickleball to me is is I think people take it too lightly as far as calor- you know the calories that you're burning. I think you would agree with me if you're playing three or four hours on a Saturday morning or whenever you play, even at night. Man, you got to rehydrate. You got to re you know, re-up your caloric intake just to keep that. So what similarities do you feel like in uh, training for pickleball is there in maybe in training and, and being an elite runner? Oh, yeah. You got to you gotta really do your a uh, lot of hydration a couple of days before. Stay hydrated is the biggest part. Like before a tournament, you need to hydrate a couple of days. Outside, 90-degree weather, playing for four hours is rough. So it's, it's all about just training. Like endurance is big and pickleball just as much as it is running. So, so I've got to ask just for uh, not only for Matt, but also for anyone else that's going to be watching this. But Jason, what are you wearing on your head? <laughs> I'm actually wearing a uh, in Indiana, Matt. I know you know this, but some days it's eighty, some days it's twenty five right now. But I'm actually wearing a fur hat, you know, just to throw throw a little style and flair into it like, since we're alive. Is that, a little what, bit. Is that chinchilla or basically, yeah? <laughs> right on. New hairstyle there. <laughs> hey, so uh got a question for you. Uh when you're training and you're uh uh what um when you're training and going to tournaments, what is your preparation like for the filming side of it? Like walk us through what that looks like on a maybe two days before the tournament, day of tournament, you know, travel home and things. I mean it's not it's not really that that bad, I don't think. Like I usually will work my regular job the day the day of like the day before I'll work and I'll fly out that night and then start filming the next morning but we get we get there about two hours before filming even starts and then we're there two hours after so it turns out to be 12 13 hour days filming now is this something that you could see yourself uh eventually doing full-time like i, I know you said you have a, a regular job but is this something that could potentially blossom out into into all you do it would it would be something i would do but i don't know it's getting harder because pickleball is blowing up so much that i think eventually it's going to be taken over by bigger and bigger companies because I work like for networks Boxcar, and Boxcar Production, and that where it's, a, it's just a small, like one person he owns it. And they, uh, right now, the tennis channel does a lot of the pickleball for the PPA events, and we've, we've been to a major, the major league pickleball events mainly. Okay. And Boxcar Production, are they, are they looking for, uh, for any more, um, videographers? <laughs> I know, maybe. You never know. So I'm sure, for, I'm sure me and Jason people. be down. <laughs> hey, Matt, real quick, what is your 9 to 5? I know you casually threw pickleball, but I never really got to know you more on a on a personal level. What what do you do 9 to 5, if you will? Yeah, it's nothing nothing major. I work at a place called Brindley Hardly in Jeffersonville, and it's uh we make lawn care equipment products like lawn spreaders, aerator spreaders, stuff like that. And I, I basically run like a Cincinnati laser machine that – I cut parts out of like up to three quarter inch steel and stuff like that. But nothing, Interesting. Nothing too major. Interesting. So, did they kind of work with you on your schedule, or do you just work a normal schedule and kind of retrofit your travel schedule around work? Yeah, I just work and then I'll use vacation time to take off because usually it's like a Wednesday through Wednesday through Sunday is usually about a tournament schedule is what I would go and film for. I think the interesting thing for me would be in that. I've played in events not of that stature. I've played in local events and a, a few national events. I mean, I played in a regional tournament. I don't compete in his tournaments as much as you probably understand and know, but I, I do a lot of fishing tournaments. So unfortunately, I split my time between fishing and pickleball, which is tough. I'll just leave it at that. But what experience have you had maybe next to the elite in the game or maybe things that you've picked up, even though you're running a camera, what are you seeing what are you kind of implementing into your game that you maybe see on a on a casual weekend at at said city? Oh yeah, I I, I watch it because I'm I'll sometimes I'll have one eye on my camera, one eye on the court watching because it it's hard. Because if I'm not filming, I'm usually at home watching it. So it's a I love the job to do it. So I pick up a lot of tips and just watch how they play and try and implement it in my game. I think it, it helps. That's a Something for any new people, they can just go out and watch pickleball film on YouTube and get better. So, so when you um, when you because I'm I'm interested in 
videography, you know, photography, all that kind of stuff. I'm just a big nerd when it comes to electronics and all that stuff. But when you when you're videoing this, like how do you I imagine you try to capture like the essence of of the game, right? Like some cool shots. Yep. I don't I would I don't think you probably you probably don't just stand there, right? So do you try to no. like kind of get down, like, you know, see some of the digs and and that sort of thing whenever whenever you're um videoing? Well, we have we have what's called low boy cameras, so they're lower to the ground, so we sit normally in a swivel chair or something, and we're catching, like the usually the camera I run catch them one side of the court, so I'm trying to catch mainly the reactions after the point's over with when they're showing the expression of them winning or oh, nice. or losing. Sometimes we can get some cool stuff of people hitting their paddles on the ground or hitting a ball out or something. I mean, we just try and catch all the emotion for replays, basically. That makes sense. So there's probably, what, like three, four camera cameras on the game when it's going uh on? no normally boxcar we have like nine total cameras oh, wow. including, including our we have a bunch of uh we have probably the best replay system you'll just have if you ever have a chance just go out and check out mlp boxcar stuff and we probably we have the best replays you, you'll see because we have a line replay on every single line mlp so we have, you said yeah it any of the MLPs from last year, we haven't done any this year because it's been crazy, but like MLP Atlanta last year, you'll just see, like when we have the replay, we can get, we can see that ball hit the line when PPA still hasn't gotten there yet. No, educate me a little bit because I'm familiar with the playing end. Um, I have some limitations as far as what I can watch and things at home, and I won't go into that just because I like to be out doing stuff. But um, are those video used for like replay or anything like that at what at what level are they at i guess during a moving actual tournament there no they're always filmed live on a lot of times it'll be start out on just major league pickleball's uh youtube page and then when we get into the bigger matches they'll get on to like espn2 the tennis channel stuff like that so they'll just depends on the what kind of level it is and where it'll be broadcast to Awesome, awesome information there. I, I guess let me rephrase that. I meant replay as in like um, instant replay, if you will, like a line call or a judgment call or a or a kitchen violation. Is any of that done, I guess, in video now, or is that not really part of the game yet? Yeah, it's done. I mean, that's that's why we have all those line cameras. I mean, we'll it'll all be shown throughout the through the video, and then sometimes even the fans will have it shown on the display board there at the court where the fans can see the ball hit the line or not hit the line. Or Whoever edits and posts, must they've got to be a badass. Because, I mean, that, like having that many cameras, you know what I mean, and that much that much footage to, to put together. Yeah. Randy, Randy, well, Randy Coleman, he's like our, what do you want to call it, like a, he's, he's in the truck where he switches from camera to camera. He's the guy, kind of the mastermind. He'll determine what cameras to replay and not to replay what to throw up and not to throw up so i've tried to do it before small term as he's let me mess around with it when i'm taking a break and it's it's a lot harder where it looks yeah yeah a lot of multitasking involved for sure oh, even yeah. for for like our little small production i mean it you know it can get kind of cumbersome at times 20 yeah, 25 got, years. go ahead matt he's got i think he's got like probably nine or ten different boxes on his on his TV screen in front of him in the trailer that he has to look at and like while the point's going on just to try and figure out where he wants to switch to. So oh, because he's doing probably some live some live games, right? Well I mean no, I mean we're do, our games are live. All of them are live. They're, oh they're, yeah they're yeah that's they're totally being live, Yeah they're being live onto the YouTube and onto ESPN. They're all live. Okay. Yeah so that's totally different. Yeah that'd be whew. I can't imagine like trying to get switched back and forth, you know, to get the best shot and all that's a lot easier when you edit. it. Cause we have two, two low boy cameras and then we have a baseline camera that we have somebody man moving. And then we have two corner shots and then we also have a baseline that just stays there steady. And then we have a guy with a gimbal walking around, getting shots of crowds and fans and up nice. close and personal with people. Now, do you typically, if you uh, filmed in Orlando and then you filmed in Houston, Texas, six weeks from now, I'm just making up arbitrary cities there, yeah. would you typically run the same camera and do the same thing, or do they kind of bounce you around, you know, tournament well, to tournament? No, we usually we usually always do pretty much the same thing. We, we'll we move around, like, when somebody needs a break or something, we'll move around to their camera just to give them a 30-minute break or something out in the heat. But majority of the time, we pick whatever camera we're best at. We all have our best camera angles that we are good at 
Go ahead, uh, Nick. Do you feel like you've learned? Because um, I, I know the whole reason, the whole way that I even was able to learn anything about audiovisual was honestly just from doing stuff at my church. So, do you feel like from from this opportunity that you've had here that you've learned enough to where and you know developed enough interest to where you might want to go and even do something else in in video? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I like when I go to. The- UFL games and stuff like that. I, first thing I do, I'm looking at these big old cameras they have, and I'm watching them. Like that's what I need to be doing. Yeah, so I'd love to do it at a basketball game. Well, and you can do so much now, even with just your phone. You know what I mean? Like some, oh, yeah. like the the newer phones. The I, in fact, we got two of the cameras we have right now are our iPhones. You know what I mean? And yeah, just yeah. because, I mean, they do a good job. So yeah, that's what I have. I've have iPhone 15 Pro Max, and they're just the cameras are amazing on them. Yeah, absolutely. I try to talk and tell people, Matt, about the uh, experiences you have in pickleball, the people you meet. You know, we know each other through playing. I mean, you've played in Indy. I've known of you. You know, vice versa, you know to me. But it's kind of nice that you meet all these people. But don't you feel that the people are uh, some of the most genuine, nice, kind people that you see? You don't see that in a lot of other sports, but the camaraderie is definitely there. Expand on that a little bit on your end. Yeah, I think pickleball is totally different. You meet a lot of cool people, a lot of nice people. Versus you go walk by a tennis court and you don't see people really talking and have fun. on. I mean, they're having fun, but they're more serious and they're taking it more serious. You get on pickleball court, people are laughing when they mess up. And in tennis, you don't, you don't see that as much. So that's definitely what makes it a lot more different than a normal, say, tennis or even basketball pickup game or something. I was amazed the first time that I actually, Jason took me and my kids the first time that I ever played. And I was amazed at the uh, diversity of the, of the uh, players. You know, everyone from you know, in their 20s to their 70s, you know, and, and didn't seem like there was an enormous skill gap between, you know, most everyone. I mean, I know, you know, I know Jason's a badass and everything, but like, <laughs> for the most part, it seemed like everyone was just pretty much on the same, you know, same skill level. Matt, don't let him fool you. We went to a 2.0 open night, so I was uh, <laughs> I was able to do pretty well. <laughs> no, no, it was just a little bit open play at a local gym. Uh, but he's right, though, the diversification and, and the people you meet. And uh, what's your future objective? Do you just want to stay to, uh, you know, stay playing to keep in shape uh, as a player? Do you feel like you're working towards a goal? Just uh, expand expand upon that a little bit. No, just probably recreation. I know nowadays there's too much talent coming in. From yeah. high level tennis players come in, you gotta be you gotta have a high D one tennis background to be even a chance to play pro or something. So I know I'm not gonna get to that point. So it's mainly just recreation, have fun. I'll play a tournament every here and there just for something different. Like yesterday, like you're talking about diversity. Yesterday I played in a four row tournament with a fourteen year old kid. We won gold in it. Or what other sport can you play with someone half your age and win a gold medal? I think that's what makes the game awesome. You know, I've played against a guy that was 82 years old that was probably five, six, 100 pounds. And l- let's be honest, you know, it's it goes unsaid. You know, if you played the hard game, you're probably going to beat that person, right? Yep. But if you got into dink rallies and, you know, 20, 30 hits on each side of the net, 40, 50 hit rallies, it was amazing. I mean, it's just, it's great to see. It's great to see the talent you have. It's great to see that, you know, you're able to implement that. And you are absolutely right, you know. I, I like to tell the wife and the kids that you're not going to come across those people in normal athletics. You know, softball, you're going to be kind of your same age. Basketball, you're going to have to kind of play with your same age. doesn't really matter if you can run a 40 and bench press a lot of pounds if you can't no. put that ball where it needs to be and use some mental uh, stability there out on the court. It, it's a tough sport to play. I think it's harder than what people realize as well. Don't you agree with that? Yep. I remember probably one of my first tournaments I played in, I went up against these two guys who were double my age. They had two knee braces on each knees, and they just kicked my butt. I, I think they scored three points on them. They yeah. just put the ball where I, put the ball where I wasn't at. They didn't have to move. They just put it where wherever they needed to go. Switching sports a little bit, but I had a guy play racquetball with me that was the same. He was a few years older than I was, and uh, to be honest with you, I probably took twelve to fifteen sprint steps to his one. He just stayed in the middle and ran me around and that's what i enjoy in pickleball as as funny as it sounds winning's great but i think uh i personally like to hit lobs over people hit some shots to make people move around and then hit that drop shot when they're 20 feet back i just i like to think through the game and that's some of my best partners are are those people what is your preferred style that you play yeah mine's more mine's more like chess i'm thinking about my next move after before i even hit my first moves I'm going to hit a shot to the right, then I'm going to the middle, then back to the right. I mean, I don't like to just overpower somebody. That's not my style. It's not as fun. Anybody can hit the ball hard. 
I think you would agree with me, but my struggle that I have right now is just the focus because I don't want to say that there's a preferred style, but in my in my narrow mind, you should play a certain way. I think you would agree with me. Some of the pros have implemented the hard game, but it's still, I think it's a soft game, speed up game. Some of the elite players right now are all speed up, but I really like, I would prefer to play in a game that's more of a shaping of the point game, average hits, you know, 10 plus. I don't really enjoy the games where it's just slam, slam, point done. Do you agree with me there or, or are yeah. you counter to that? No, those those kind of slam point games aren't, aren't any fun to me. You don't really get a workout first First of all. If you're just hitting one or two balls and then it's either in the net or out or something like that. But, yeah, I think a lot of the pros are going to the harder game, but I think it's a lot to do with the paddles. The paddles that are coming out now are they're really starting to be really poppy and really heavy. You hit heavy balls with them. So it's really not their fault. It's more the paddles because it's just balls coming off so fast. I know I know that pickleball being a, a newer, you know, a newer sport, especially in the mainstream, um, uh, maybe a lot of people don't know some of the more, um, you know, the more well-known pickleball players, but we're, we're scheduled to have uh, Dave Weinbach on here, here pretty soon. And um, that said, I mean, what would, do you have any kind of like, I don't know, like icons or anything like that in the, in the pickleball world or any specific players that you kind of look up to or try to model yourself after? I've known Dave for Dave for a while. I did a clinic with him probably six years ago. Probably one of my first clinics I did with him. I think down in Evansville or Owensboro. I can't remember. But I did a pickleball clinic with him. But yeah, he's a he's definitely one of the OGs of the sport. But Kyle Yates was like one of the first people that I ever watched on YouTube, and I his game has always been something that I enjoy to watch. And he's not around as much anymore, but he's definitely one of the people that I first started watching when I first got into pickleball. Who are some of like the new upcoming um, pickleball players? You know, people that I mean, I don't like. I said I'm not extremely well versed in the sport, so I don't know. You know, I don't know all the stats and that kind of thing. But like, are there are there uh, is that even a thing? Like, are they looking at okay, like these are going to be the next superstars in, in pickleball? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of them out there. A lot of young kids are getting into it nowadays. Like there was a guy a guy before COVID hit that I was supposed to play with in a couple of two or three tournaments COVID hit they canceled a lot of tournaments and then we never got to play we were gonna play four or five events his name is Wyatt Stone now he plays on the pro tour and has won big t- won some gold medals on the pro tour and he's that's all he plays now is pro so he he's one of the people that was talked about but there's a bunch of young kids that all are saying the next Ben Johns which is the number one player in the world you just they're popping out from everywhere Matt, let's pull away from pickleball just for a minute. What do you do away from pickleball? Maybe um, it can be whatever it is, but what do you typically do? Like if you don't have pickleball, maybe playing or uh, filming for the next X amount of time, what are you doing during that time to fill your time? Uh, Not a lot, really. I mean, pickleball fills up a lot of time. I have people asking me all the time to play when it's nice. That's pretty much what I do. But other than that, uh, stuff around the house i have a couple dogs and i don't really have i used to play ultimate frisbee i don't play that as much anymore i play a little golf here and there but other than that not a lot really ultimate frisbee is a fun event i uh i was uh fishing one time and there was a group of about 20 guys playing and they were about 20 years younger than me and i've been around sports my whole life and i don't claim to be overly athletic but you know, everybody likes to brag on themselves, but I rarely pick up a sport that I can't at least play, right? No. And that was just phenomenal, you know, running 20, 30 yards down. And it's it's so weird how that Frisbee just gets in kind of the jet streams and can kind of yeah. go up and down, not just a straight line throw. So that was uh, it was impressive. That was way harder than I thought because just looking at yeah. it, it didn't look hard, but you're you're tired after about 15 minutes if you're not careful. It's just like playing soccer, except you're using a Frisbee instead of a soccer ball. You're just sprinting the whole time. I did it for like two years before I found pickleball. I played two or three nights a week, and my legs were always sore. You guys ever do either one? Of you guys ever do um, frisbee golf or disc golf? I have. That's You're actually really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, that's I, much. That's much easier on your body, but it's still hard too. Yeah. Well, trying to get. I mean, because any, anybody can throw like a regular frisbee, but like those different. You know those drivers and the the irons and everything yeah, like that. That's I nuts. I just, you know? use, I just use the same one. I don't even. Know. Uh, that's, do you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I okay. Do. Have maybe two. You know, you throw one in the yeah. weeds and you can't find it. Yeah. So yeah, I can't I have know. a big bag I, I, and some I of the guys. It, 
Go ahead. I don't see it. I don't see a difference between the all. I know they're different weights, but other than that, it ain't gonna help my game anymore. Guys have the roller bags with twelve, but just yeah. like you though, I mean, I I almost guarantee I don't even need to ask you. I guarantee you got more than one one paddle in your bag. You know, you got yeah. I, you get, I keep a couple in my bag, but I probably have ten at home. Yep, exactly. Hey, so I'm going to be a little selfish with this next question. We want to be mindful of your time as well, but um, I'm going into Louisville for the weekend, man. Give me a couple places to eat. Give me a couple pieces to see, uh, maybe in the town that's kind of off the beaten path. Not really looking for anything commercialized, looking for more, yeah. hey, a local local XYZ kind of point me in the right direction there. Yeah, you can't go wrong with really either in the Highlands or Bar South Road. They have a bunch of hole-in-the-wall restaurants, bars, you name it, they have it. There's a bunch of places I still haven't ate there, but like on a, a good place if you like chicken is the Eagle. It's on Bar Sound Road. It's a great place to eat. And then there's stuff downtown, but it's more touristy and local. Like the pub under the bridge is right by the Yum Center. I've heard good things about, but Bar Sound Road you can't go wrong with. You'll find all kinds of mom and pop places you won't find anywhere else. Is that like the is that like the art districts? I remember when the last time I went down there, we literally Googled what is the art district in downtown Louisville, and so we I forget what it was called, but yeah, they had like bands playing outside on the sidewalk, and then there was a lot of those walk in bar, open bars, you know, like where you know there wasn't you know, they didn't have a wall in the front or whatever, and you can just yeah. go in and sit down. Yeah, that's probably at Barstow Road. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting city. Like I said, there's uh that used to always be the exciting part when I'd travel down to Kentucky as a, as a young guy, you know, we'd go to Kentucky four or five times a year. So we always went right over that bridge at that time. The Yum center yep. wasn't there. You know, this was 30 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, somewhere in there. So it's always a good city. It's uh, good to live there. Indianapolis has got a lot to offer cause we can go in multiple directions. You know, we got yep. baseball, basketball, football, you know, right within a I'm a, I'm a Hoosier yeah. fan, so I'm 45 minutes away from that. So, yeah, Louisville will be on the upswing. Um, they're never going to stay uh, quiet, if you will, in basketball, no, in my opinion. They're always no. going to, you know, get recalibrated and head in the right direction. Yeah, we should. I think we're going in the right direction. He seems like he's going to be a good coach that we got now, but we'll see. We thought that about Kenny Payne too. Yeah, real quick, just going back to going back to pickleball. What do you think it is that's causing? What is it about pickleball that's causing it to grow as fast as it is? Because I had never even heard of it until maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and now it's just so mainstream. Like you hear about it, even Hollywood, and you know, like everyone's playing it. So, like, what you know, what do you think it is about about it that's causing it to explode as fast as it is? I just think it's because it's so easy. You can what sport can you go and start? right away and you can once you would play for an hour you already know how to play it you could be pretty good at it after about an hour like basketball you can't just take a seven-year-old out and play basketball in a pickup game and do well pickleball you can get a seven-year-old with a 70 year old on the same team and still have fun and be competitive so i think it's just the how easy it is and how fun and interactive it is for the whole family and the, all the families something they can do together for someone that's never played before that want to, would want to get started and maybe they're a little intimidated just because it's something out of their element, like what what would you recommend they do? You know, where 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 should they go or who should they contact and you know what equipment that kind of thing? I would say like go onto YouTube, YouTube and search search pickleball up and just see what it's all about. You can look at a lot of instructional videos on there. There's so many out there. Start there and then find some. Look up your local pickleball courts and go out there and talk to people. Pickball people are nice. You can go out, even if you don't have a paddle, someone will let you borrow theirs and let you play with it, hit around with it. Nobody's going to say, no, you can't use my paddle. Most of the time, people are going to be very helpful, and we all started there. I've helped out many of people by handing them a paddle and saying, here, try, and then they get hooked. My, uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this, Matt. Um, my pickleball karma came from a guy named Eric, man. I look at him as a mentor. He's just a very uh, – you played with him there in um, the hideout there in Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, left-handed guy and yeah, uh, just just uh fundamental and just very nice and and he's always taught me i think when i started playing about eight years ago is he always taught me to try to give more to the sport than what you take away from the sport and i think both of us really do that because you know you're filming to show other people you've been kind enough to go to clinics you've taught people to play and i think you know i want to shake your virtual hand on that because i think if we're giving back to the generation you've played with some young men 
I've played with some young men and young ladies. I've played with some very old people, you know, that can't move around or can't do anything in the gym, but they love to play pickleball just playing around. So it's a great sport. Horizons are growing and uh, continue to do what you do. And uh, this has been very natural for us, man. Exciting noise. Yep. Uh, talk pickleball. You're doing some good things. If you ever need us, let us know. And uh, we'd be happy to have you back on. If you ever have any guests that would benefit from, you know, kind of putting out their personal platform, um, yep. have at it and uh, hope to see you on the court soon. Yeah. Besides Boxcar right. uh, Productions, what is there um, any, pl- where can we find, where can people find you? Like if you want them, is there any place you want to, Instagram or, you know, anything like that that you're on that you would want anyone to? No, to- just typically Facebook is about all I use. But my Instagram, I don't really use too much, but they can search me up on it's on my Facebook page. It's certainly by full name. But other than that, that's that's primarily the primary way. Okay. Louisville, any Louisville pickleball social media, I'm usually somewhere on there to where I see comments and stuff. Okay, so Boxcar Productions, though, that's where if, if someone wanted to um, get – I mean, is it the kind of place that they that anyone can call and and get them to to film a um, a pickleball whatever? Like, let's say let's say there's a family reunion, then they're going to do some kind of like hardcore pickleball, like you know, let's smash Uncle Fester into the wall. Uh, would, would they would they do something like that? They could. They might. I'm not sure. I mean, it's their our production is pretty high, so it may be a little pricey for something like that. But they've mainly only really done pro events. But I'm sure the guy that owns it's not. He would always look into it and throw out some numbers. Okay. Great. Well, thanks, man. We really appreciate you coming on. Uh, maybe we can have you on again sometime. Maybe we can even see each other yep. on the pickleball court sometime. Yep. I'm sure I'll be around somewhere. <laughs> right on. I appreciate it, man. Get some uh, strong overheads and win some games, man. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thank you.